God loves us, church. Yeah, he, does. he wants us to fight to work together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you all don't recognize uh, how hard that it's getting, it's just because you ain't got in the spirit. It's tough for God's people to get together. And the unity just don't seem to be there like it used to be. And I'm not discrediting the, the power of God at all. The Bible said we're sin abound. Did not much more grace. But I'd like to get together with God's children this little while. I don't know if you realize we're in war. We are. And they souls, it's in the balance today. I tell them they ain't nothing more important than God's will. And whatever it is, that's what we're going to do. Whatever God's will is. If He moves on you to walk around, that is very important for you to walk around. If He moves on you to touch somebody, it's important that you go over and touch whoever He said. If you don't see nothing happen, you can hinder the will of God by not being willing. I, we tell people, Brother Josh, don't move till you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you know, move. Don't stand still and hold it. We work together. Come on. Workers together. Let's look out for one another. In the third chapter of the book of Genesis. There probably ain't nobody here right here in my testimony, but I'm going to share this the way God gives it up. Amen. Amen. I'll do my best to, to bring it out the way he wants me to bring it out. And i got maybe one more place maybe we'll go to, help with the Lord. The Bible reads like this. It said, now the first verse in the third chapter of Genesis. It said, now the serpent was more sub subtle or subtile than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said that we're in the garden tonight, and you all know the story. God made Adam and Eve, put them in the garden to work, and the enemy come, the devil come as a servant, speaking to Eve. That's where we are. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When I was reading this, the Bible, she, she kindly said, Eve kindly said some things that God didn't say. But the devil know what God had said. He told her not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the devil knows that. He didn't tell her not to touch it that I read. Or maybe I missed it, but I didn't recognize it. But he told her, he said, you won't surely die. And this way the Lord laid this on my heart and popped this a little. I won't be long. Come on, give the Lord. I felt like uh, bringing uh, the thought to you all's mind. And, and if you all help me just a little, I believe you can understand what I'm trying to get across. Just a little, because not only I'm going to use some things that I know, Brother Jerry, from when I was a young child, and kind of bring it forth to where we were, where we are as Christians. Uh, and the devil tells us sometimes that ain't going to hurt you, that ain't going to bother you. Uh, you can do that; it won't be no big problem. It ain't. You really ain't going to die. When I read that scripture, I'm going to be honest with you, it's in the carnal mind. She really didn't die. The devil told her that she, was, that she wouldn't die, but she'd know the difference between good and evil. But there, she ate that fruit of the tree of knowledge, and she didn't die because she took it and shared it with her husband. And they too eat of that fruit and then the Bible said that at the beginning they were naked and they knew not that they were naked. Yeah, she got too much time. When she took a bite of that fruit, now you all bear with me just a little.
there. But she took a bite of that fruit. The Bible said that their eyes were open. And it said there, so I'm kind of feeling like that maybe both of them, it was when he took the bite of the fruit is when their eyes were open. Because the Bible said there. Yeah. And I believe that's two. Come on. So maybe it wasn't when she ate the fruit, but it was when he took the bite of the fruit. Their eyes were open and they recognized that they were naked and the Bible said they sowed fig leaves on them and they hid their sin. How many times has the devil told you that you ain't going to have to worry, you can do that and it won't hurt you? See, there's some testimonies here today that some people has come through some things that they've got some scars. That the devil kept on talking and telling them, that old serpent, he kept on prodding them and telling them, you're not going to die. God will forgive you. You can do this and you won't die. Get you a little out of that. Just try it and see. And you know what happens? He, he, he just just as he did to, to Eve, he, he, he beguiled her. He tricked her. How many of us has he tricked? Amen. I believe exactly what Josh said tonight. I believe that you can get to a place where you don't want to sin no more. And the Bible said if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Hallelujah. If we sin, we go to the Jesus, and Jesus, if we're He is faithful, He is just. If we repent, He'll forgive us of our sin. But what I'm afraid of is sometimes, Melinda, I, I, you may remember this. I don't know. When we were little, uh, growing up, Brother Gary in a divorced home, and the the back the bad thing about that was. Come on. Is is we didn't have no parents. Yeah. Daddy was a rascal, and mommy went to work to do what daddy was supposed to be doing, and we was three heathens doing whatever we wanted to do. Come on, keep. Long as the house was clean when mom come in, that was enough help for her. She didn't. Father is too much. Come on. Come on, Keith. If there was any danger, I'm going I'm to just talk to you just a little bit. Just, just bear with me. I'm going to tell you some things. I hope it don't bother you. I, I don't even know why God wants me to do this. I said, Lord, that probably everyone here already knows everything about this, but you want me to do it again? I'll do it. All right. Come on. When there was any chance of mom and dad ever getting back together, you know what us three kids done? Come on. Everything we could do to stop it. Why'd you do that for? Because we done whatever we wanted to do. Come on. We had no correction. Children not knowing no better. I can remember stealing cigarettes off mom and smoking. Come on, kid. They said, you better not do that. That'll kill you. We'd sit out there by our place and we'd puff on them cigarettes. I remember in the second grade, Sandy. Melinda come home from school. I remember that old orange counter. I can see that old orange counter today. When God was a moving on. We was poor people. Melinda brought a joint home from school. And I was in the second grade and we went in the kitchen. We opened up the window in the kitchen and we smoked the joint and blowed the smoke out the window. Come on, kid. I remember people saying, you better not do that. That'll kill you. Come on. But in my mind, I said, the cigarette didn't bother me. Come on, kid. Now we've smoked the joint, it don't bother me. Help along, there was something down inside of my heart that I was trying to cover up. There was some hurt down in there that I didn't understand why, and I was trying to cover it up. The only person we was danger to was ourselves. 
It didn't stop there. I, I won't take long. Come on, What I wanted to give Christ to you today is these things may not immediately be a problem. You know? But I, I, I used to run around. We started uh, snorting pills and drinking and doing drugs. Cocaine. It started out with a cigarette, Brother Jerry. And they said it won't bother. This won't hurt you. Go ahead. My buddy said, don't you want to be like us? Uh, here, here's your drink. I used to run around and I told him, I said, I'll never shoot dope. Uh, them guys has went farther than I would ever go. I'll never be a dope shooter. Do you know what happened after a while? I kept on going the wrong direction until I was at the right place at the right time. I can remember he's dead now, Ernie. Yeah. Down at uh, Path Fork. I was sick off that dope. I was riding with him and he had a handful of them oxy tins. I can see it right now. Little white pill. Yeah, come on. I was so sick. I said, Ernie, give me one of them pills. He said, the only way you get one of these pills is shoot it. Hallelujah. I said, I ain't doing that, Ernie. He said, well, you ain't getting one of these pills. That's the buddy of mine and Todd's. Yeah. We got on up about time with Ernie. I said, well, just fix me one up. I don't know how to do it, Ernie, but I'm sick. I need to get this off of me. Ernie fixed it up. I done my first shot. He didn't kill me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I stole for the first time, Josh, and they, they said, when, when, you, when you get caught stealing, you're in trouble. Yeah. I got so good, I didn't get caught. Just let me talk to you just a little bit. God moved on me, Brother Jerry. I'm telling you, if they, we are still suffering today because of what Eve done in that garden. We're still suffering today because you women know about it. We're still suffering today because of what Adam done in that garden. There's an angel there today and we won't eat from that tree of life no more. Garden that garden. The only life we'll get is through Christ Jesus. That's it, brother. That's the door and that's the only way in it. It will not change. Not telling you because. Judgment is not executed speedily. Come on. Men are set in their heart that they can get by with these things. And the devil is continually talking to us. Telling us you're not going to suffer like you think you are. There's some people sitting right here tonight can tell you what they suffer because of sin. See, Brother Jerry, I'm not one of them guys that should be up here telling you what to do. But I can't tell you what not to do. Come on, come on. I tell you what you better not do. If you keep going down that road, I'm telling you what's going to happen after a while. Sin will reach and grab a hold of you and you will not have a decision in it anymore. Our children sometimes can get together. You all know how it is. Y'all just kids. I know y'all. You tell a little lie and you won't fix it. And you don't die. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, you done it? I know you do. You did. Come on. And, and, and then you recognize a little bit down the road, you maybe even as a Christian, Brother Jerry, I, I start seeking God. And, and there's some little something back there that I done. Yeah. That I didn't, it didn't mean enough to me. And, and I didn't feel no condemnation over it. And I done it and I kept on going forward. And I got down to seeking the Lord. And I, when I really got my heart set to where God wanted me to be, I, that Spirit would reveal unto me that that I'd done back there. Yeah. He said, when you make that right, yeah. Yeah. when you fix that, you can go forward. But until that's right, no. you can't go no further forward. Amen. See, there's people here today that's a desire and they do Holy Ghost. And if there's anything back there that has caused you to trip and stumble, it's not God's will for you to continue to stumble over it. But just fix it. Just say I'm sorry. Do you hear what 
just said that prophet done just made it right. That's all, Jerry. I used to get mad up there on the hill because uh, I you tell us you'd say when you do wrong, stand up in the church and say I'm sorry. You, I didn't tell what I done. I just confessed my faults and I said I'm sorry and I really was sorry. Yes, I was hurt. I was sorry and that was hard to do and I, I was getting mad at you out. Because I, I said, I guess I'm the only one messes up down there at Cagle and everybody else got this thing figured out but me. Because nobody else ever stood up and said, I made a mistake this week. Come on, kid. Or I wasn't there that night. I might have been somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So instead of looking at myself, I was looking at everybody else. But you know what? I was the one who had the problem. Come on, Amen. Come on, Come on bro. And that was just what the enemy was doing, getting my attention on everybody else. Right. So I wouldn't be so concerned about myself. Come on. Right. Yeah. But even if you didn't make it right, it didn't make me right because you did. Right. <laughs> it just made us both wrong. Yeah. 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 So I want to try to figure out what it takes to just humble my heart down and, and get it right. <laughs> and whether you do or not, I don't want to, I don't want to go on. I, I've not been since I started going to church and I really got through. I, I mean, when I really prayed through it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it, when I started heaven, I didn't even know if it was real or not. I didn't know if heaven. A lot of our kids here today is just enjoying church. And the concept of heaven and hell is really not settled down into their heart. The way that God will allow it to if they continue going through the house. I was a drug addict, guys. I just didn't want to be a drug addict no more. Come on. I never, if I would have known what Mama I was talking about when she said, you better get to church, Kenny. I would have went to church and I'd have quit doing the things that I wanted to do. Yes. But I didn't know. Come on. Come on. So, 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 like an adolescent or like a child would do, or maybe even like Eve and Adam done, I just eat that fruit. And I eat it and I didn't know, I just went on in life. And life continued to take me the wrong way. When we come in here, Brother Gary, you know, I can remember, I believe Melinda, maybe the first day or so after I prayed, Brother Jerry, I didn't know about dressing, right? I didn't know about the things that would cause you to go on into sanctification and wholeness. I didn't know about them things. I heard you all talk about them, but I didn't know about them. All I know for sure is I wasn't a drug addict no more. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, come on. And that was enough for me. But what I'm afraid of, Sandy, is some people here today don't got the same problem I have. I'd like to tell you what will be the end result of your problem. Come on, Kenny. 57 years I was a begging God, don't let me go to jail. Come on, Kenny. Come on, Kenny. I'll go the right way, Lord, if you'll keep that out from me. 57 years I was married with a child on the way. I was going to prison. Come on, Kenny. I'm telling you, other than prison, there's a death sentence put on me. Come on,
There was something got on me. I always felt sorry for the poor people. Yeah. 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 Brother Gary, when they'd be mean to the children at school, I, I could play ball, so they they was didn't treat me like the poor kids, even though I was poor kid. I remember when they laughed at the Walmart shoot. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Kmart then, I guess it was. They laughed me up and down the hallways at my Kmart shoes. I didn't even know why they was a laughing. I was just glad to have a new pair of shoes. Yes. I didn't know the difference between Air Jordan and Nike. It didn't make no difference to me. Whatever my mouth could put on me, it was good enough for me. Right. Hallelujah. Hello, woman. I lived 300 and some dollars a month, if I ain't mistaken. Hallelujah. Come on. Kid. She drawed on a check. She stayed right there at home and she prayed out that family's meals. Hallelujah. I remember at Christmas she'd bake them cakes. Uh, Jason, them uh, apple stack cakes. Yeah. To get us all a little Christmas present. Yeah. I tell you, probably most of our kids today would laugh at the little presents that we got then. But we were so tickled to have it. Sure. Wow. Yeah. Things is a changing, brother Jerry. Yeah. Things is a changing. We're flourishing. We're reaping where we didn't even sow. Of the red labor, and we're reaping the benefits of other men's labor. Right. Uh, I thank God, Lord. I don't take it no other way. I'm glad today that it's that way. But I've come tonight to tell you that if you do eat that fruit, I, I got one more place. I, I, I'll get out of here. I know I don't desire to keep you down. I know how it is to go to church and work. Uh, I'm telling you that if I'd only know Come on. what was the coming. If I'd only realized, I believe uh, Phil Gray, I was going down to a lady's house, and she'd give me a second dose. I'd go home and I'd roll it up, man. And I had Kim selling dope at Skid. Come on. Amen. Come yeah. on. Whoa. Didn't it, Mom? Boy, if we'd have known that Mom and Daddy would have known. If we'd have cared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I'm all praying. And that didn't stop all the enemy was enough. Mamma, Mamma was a praying woman. Yes, she was. We had probably two or three beds in her bedroom. We could sleep in the same room with her, but we had to sleep in her own bed. Come on. Homeless woman. Yeah. Uh, amen. Never, amen. Never dreamed I'd be who I was. Come on. Never believe that just the little things that I thought was all right today. You never believe what a little lie do to you right now as a Christian. You never believe what talking about somebody will do to you as a Christian. Amen. You can get by with it a time or two. I remember one time we was at a place and this person called in talking about somebody that was close to me. And they texted it on my phone. <coughs> Hallelujah. Got to talking about them and after they got done writing it and they texted it through, the person standing there said, answer my phone for me. When they opened up that phone, little did they know that the one they was talking about was the one that was opening up the phone. Oh, my boy, I'm on with you. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, we're careful. We'll get out of them, Zachariah. Die. Come on. <laughs> I'm talking about the devil's fruit, not God's fruit. That's a fruit that lead, let us live eternally. Got one more place. I believe over here. You all bear with me. I know it's a little different, but it's. I, I, if 
I would have really realized. I told him uh, a little bit back. I guess up Gary's, when Charlie was up at Gary's. Uh, I said, the only thing I hate about my Christian life is I wish I would have used wisdom when I had strength. Yeah. Now I ain't got no strength and it ain't an option. I have to seek out wisdom. It's better than strength. Come on. But how good would it be if I had strength using wisdom? I told him I didn't. I quit school because I know everything. That's the mind of a child. I had no need to go to school. If I know it's going to cost me 57 years, I probably went to school. I tell them boys sometimes when the temperature hits below zero and it starts getting real cold outside, and they say, "Kenny, are we going to work today?" I said, boys, you made this decision many years ago. Don't come out here crying to me. Come on, man. You should have went to school. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 Our life is about over with now. I'm well probably over half of my life, Brother Jerry. Maybe a little closer to the end than what I realized. I made the decision as a kid is what I've come to preach tonight of what my life was going to be. Little did I know God has come by and rescued me, dear God. I'm not telling none of you here today that they ain't a rescuer. If y'all hear me just a little bit, I got some help. You have to loosen up just a little bit on me. I know this ain't going to go to everybody, but it's going to land right where God wants it. Hey, All right. Right. All right. Don't rescue me. Mitch of God come down and like he said brought me out of Egypt and I am a free man today. This morning when I woke up I had a decision of which way I wanted to go. And I chose to go God's way. That's the way I'm going. They said you better be careful. This is a decision that God has gave me in you. And when I'm all by myself, Jerry, I ain't changed my decision. When I'm around a group of people, I ain't changed my decision. I still want to God's way. And I'm telling you, the decisions that I made when I was a kid is affecting me right now today. I'm not the man that I'm supposed to be. Amen. Because of the decisions that I made, my lungs, brother Jerry, is in pitiful condition. Come on, kids. Pneumonia. Several times a year. Most of the time if God just don't move. My back out. Amy having to put my socks on. If I would have known to sneaking around there smoking that cigarette beside that fireplace, what it was going to escalate to. Come on, Come on kids. But if mommy and daddy, if mommy was doing it, why not do it? Come on, kids. Today, if you eat of that, no matter who's doing it, it's going to hurt you. Right. If you see it, we'll catch you after a while. My body in bad shape. Ain't that beautiful? I remember when they told me, Brother Jerry, and, and this is some things that's going to come. I remember when they told me my old coaches called me and they said, uh, We got your uniform number when Gabriel's ready to play. You just let him play. And I said, God, why ain't playing by? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I done it the best I could do it, brother Gary. I didn't want both of them. I still don't want both of them. God is grace is what we depend on, not what I think. Right, right, right. Right. That wasn't good enough for them. They called me back. They said, Kenny, whenever you're in revival, he don't have to practice. He don't have to we, he don't even have to come to the games when you're in revival. We'll still let him start. Starting five on the Bible team. You'll just let him come with your number. Yeah. I said, ain't no way, my boy, when he gets 18 years old or whenever it is when he decides to go out and get married, whatever works for him, whatever happens, he's going to be beat up and broke up. Hallelujah. Because I wouldn't tell him no. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. I said, I need to jerk your heart out sometimes. Hallelujah. When he come home with tears rolling down his cheek, saying, Daddy, I just want to be like the other children.
children. I said, son, daddy was like the other children. And the road that it's taking them down, you don't want to go down that road. Come on, come on. Come on. It'll be heaven when I get there. I ain't, I ain't dreading my journey. 
journey. When he's ready, oh man, I'm ready, but he gave me an obligation. He said, train up that child in the way that it should go. I ain't trying to get out of here, boy. It's my time. I got plans on training up my children. Four years old, guys, we'll look at and I'd tell him, I'd say, son, it can be the easy way or the hard way. That's right. I'm telling you, Heather, he would look at me with the boldest, and I'm just getting out of the tip with that. The boldest little look, he would look at me, and he'd say, Daddy, it's going to be the hard way. <laughs> Oh, don't go that road. Oh, don't go that road, son. You know what I'll do, though? If he decides to go that way, I'll still love him. Yeah. 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 If he goes to jail, he's still my boy. I'm still going to love him. Yeah. If he goes the wrong direction, I'm still going to tell him how much I love him. Yeah. And I still want him to know when he's in trouble, that's one man he can die.
You'll leave this life, that man loving you. His love is so great that no matter where you are tonight, He wants you to do good. I've been around people that just want to figure out how they can persecute me for the man that I used to be. Amen. They told me one time, they said, your boy, your children is going to be awful. You wait and see. For the child that you was and the kid that you was, I said, I got forgive for all of that. I got forgiven for all of that. God loved me so much that He forgave me for everything that I've done. Even the things that I can't tell you of. The mistakes that you have made since you have become Christian. God's love was great enough that He allowed His grace to let you get forgiveness and continue on your journey that you could have a chance to make heaven your eternal home. What about a love like that tonight now, friends? I'm telling you, that's not man's love. I 100% believe that we've got to keep boundaries and standards in the church house. But if a man gets forgiven, we've got to let him get forgiven. Amen. I believe that it, that it is God's will to teach us holiness, sanctification, yeah. dress codes. I believe all of that. Sure. I'm telling you what I've come to do tonight. I've come to preach to somebody. Don't eat of that fruit. God loves you, and if you have tasted of it, there's something about that taste. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. There's something about that taste that when you get it in your mouth, you can't get it out. It may not be alcohol. Amen. It may not be drugs. It may not be cigarettes tonight. These are just things that God has used that I have experienced for myself that I can use for illustration. That may not be what you're facing tonight. Amen. But whatever it is, Whatever has happened up to this point in your life, I want you to recognize tonight that God loves you. Amen. Those people comes in this church house can't hold their head up no more. Sure. Amen. I said it'll never be God's I feel that way. I'll never treat a man or a woman that has failed that they have to hold their head down as if I'm somebody. No. But the sin that they have committed mm -hmm. and the scar that it left, the shame has never left. We've tried to encourage them and tell them that God is a forgiving God. Leave all of that outside. Forget about it. But you know what happens when they almost get through? Somebody stands up and says something. Yeah. And all of that comes fresh again in their mind and they're right back down where they started. I said, but when you start listening to what God to say, yeah. we're listening and worrying about what everybody else is to say. Get your mind fixed that God will not hold you back. He will allow you to go. He'll give you the desires of your heart if you'll delight yourself in. He'll withhold no good thing from you if you'll continue. I'll stay as long as you want to sing. If these other brothers feel like doing anything, brother, dear God, come and come down here tonight. And I want him to come. I, I'm telling you, I hope. I wish I could say it's going to get better. It probably ain't going to get better, guys. It probably ain't going to get better. And as you get older, Come it's going to be a little harder. <laughs> Come on. Amen. You can't bear the battle like you one time did. Come on, Keith. When you can't do it for others like you one time did, I got bad news for you tonight. 
They're going to do away with you. They're going to find somebody that will carry the battle for them. Hello, it's coming. Just get ready. I'm already preparing myself for it. I'm getting ready for it. It's coming. I have one cousin of mine. She come over every time she get in trouble. We'd go to work with God. I'd go down to business. I'd fast and I'd pray. And I spoke this to the Lord many times when she was in trouble. I said, Lord, put it on me. Let me carry it. And let her go free. And help her one more time, would you please? Brother Jerry, I, if I ever got prayers through from time to time, that one he heard. And it would get so hard on me, I felt like I was going to go under. I've done that two, three, four times, Mitchell. She'd go right back out and do the same thing over and over again. That last time she come in, I said, listen, sis, if God will help me, I'm going to beg Him and pray. I'm going to ask for His mercy and His compassion. And I'm going to hope that He will help you one more time. I said, but to carry that load that I've been carrying for you, I'm done. It's taking me down too. Come on, Come on, on Brother Gary, we can only handle what so much. Yeah. You're only going to be able to stand there. You know what happened to me and Dad? Hallelujah. When Mamma died, the further the faster. Mamma's prayer stood in between judgment many a time for me. Amen. Watch it. We got some right here in Mother Church right now. Just as soon as they go, trouble is a gun. Hope I can help you a little bit tonight. Hope I can get you to recognize that God loves you. I didn't realize when I was carrying out the signs and the power of God was on me that He loved me. It was when I wasn't fit to raise my head up. I felt like I failed him in such a manner that nobody should love me. Yeah. I was sorry for the sins. Give me just a few more minutes. I feel it start working. Come on. Come on. I'm going to put some that good seed. I got some good seed to sow tonight. Hello, and your children. It's worth everything we can do to put it in there. Our church family is worth everything that we can bind together and do and put it in there. Friends, if you don't recognize it today, we are running out of time. We are running out of time. That devil is just about to grab a hold. Now I'm telling you, when he grabs a hold, you're not getting them back. Oh, about to get on well enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It'd be the easy way and the hard way. Which Come way on. you going to go? Come on. Hallelujah. Which way you going to go? I'm telling you what I need. I need you to be willing to reach out to my child. Listen, I'm telling you one thing. They won't sneak around and at my house and smoke no joint. Amen. Amen. And you might get mad at me with them when I bring them to the house. But if I catch them down here in Kaywood, come on, uh, yeah. slipping around doing what they are not doing, we are coming home. Just get ready. Yeah. 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 I used to tell them in school, I said, you don't have to call me to whoop my boy. If he does wrong, just take him on in there and take the paddle to him and whoop him. Come on. We'll discuss the fine print after a while. I'd rather you take care of that problem and not let him go on and think they ain't no. Come on, kid. Come on, kid. Yeah, come on, kid. Come on. When you do the wrong thing, it's a result of what you've done. Amen. Bible said, Be not deceived, God is not mine. So whatsoever it is, so, so shall it be. Be the children too. Come on. Yeah. Feel that want to let me leave this little bit? I'd like to get through this little bit. I'm telling you, Freeman, when, when we 
have to get up and we have to do what God tells us to do with the hurt that people's already suffering right now. It makes me go home and I think, Lord, they're already in such great trouble. Right. Listen how hard you are. I'm not telling you today that if we ain't very careful, we're going to let some right now that you never think will slip through and go the wrong way and tell you what God has taught my heart. Sin is at the door. It's already entered in. I talked to a person just a little while back. Sin had crept in and wrong had already begun. They already started taking hold of sin. And I told them, I said, listen, God still is showing mercy. I can feel it. It ain't gone yet. Now we don't just run out and leave us, does it? But if we continue going the wrong way, pretty soon we'll look around. You know what? I got a phone call from that same person that I told. Don't go too far or you're going to get in trouble. And then he wanted to be hateful to me. Sure. Yeah. Wanted to talk smart to me. Come on. I said, the peace of God is now gone, my friend. Where you go from here if you don't turn now. If you can turn now. <laughs> trying to finish up, trying to close. I told uh, ah, Joe's brother. Uh, one time lived good, didn't he, Joe? Sure Gary, well, Gary. Gary knows that man walked. That white man walked a straight line. God gave me a dream one time. I seen Todd and I seen his house. And I seen it burned all the way to the ground. And there wasn't nothing but ashes all around. Todd had been coming in and around a little bit trying to come back. He told me one time, he said, Kenny, he said, don't never quit. He said, because I'm telling you, it's hard to get back. I listened to what Todd said. God gave me that dream. He was kind of pulling back just a little. And I, I told him, I said, Todd, except that you really get your mind and your heart set to let God help you, your house will be burned all the way to the ground. Everything you've done won't matter no more. Watch my friend burn. And he's still burning today. I'm hoping that our prayers, God will answer and give him another opportunity. Heather, what I'm saying is once you go down that road, you may not get back when you want to. Come on, sure. Come on, man. In the back of my mind, I know that he wasn't getting back as quick as he thought. Amen. Maybe you all remember. I remember the Lord. Just let me remember the night that he gave it to me. The Lord told me to tell him. He said, tomorrow, if you'll turn this away, when it comes to your door, I'll give you full deliverance immediately. We were somewhere around Cable Church. I can't remember if it's here up on the hill. I can't remember. Here. Might have been here. Todd told me that they left his mind. Okay, and he didn't think no more about that after he left. He said he was standing at the door where he bought his dope at. He said when he knocked on the door, he said he remembered what God said. And he said, Kenny, he called me. Todd called me and apologized to me. He said, God spoke to me that when I opened, when I knocked on the door, that if I turned and walked away, yeah. he would deliver me right there. Come on, Kenny. He said, Kenny, I've got to apologize to you. He said, I didn't turn and walk away. See, what it really comes down to is are you willing to turn and walk away? 
This is such a serious thing. Frank, it's serious. That you can get out there and stay out there a long time. God, you, you wonder where he's at, won't you? Frank can tell you that's a, that's a bad place out there. Ain't it? It's a bad place out there. But I'm telling you, God has got the difference. God can put that down in you that you have the ability to say no. He said, who the Son sets free. God's Spirit dwells within us. It doesn't keep us from being tempted, but I'm going to tell you what it does. It allows us to say no to the temptation. And to turn. You know how you felt when you done wrong and that Spirit convicted you of it? I'm telling you, it made me feel so rotten. Sandy, I ain't thought about being a drug addict in a really long time. I, I'm telling you all, I got heaven on my mind. I got missing that like the far. Sis, and that's all that's been on my mind for years. When God spoke to me the other day, He told me, He said, except you tell them what I tell them, their blood will be laid in your charge. I remember where I come from immediately. Come on, when I said I don't want to go back on Come on. Hallelujah. It's the most serious I can if I don't want to go back to you. If you all got an area, if I feel that you don't want me to stand in the church, Hallelujah, just tell me where I can. I'll stand there. But I don't want to go back. Jerry, if I get to the place where I can't stand up here no more, then what I'm doing right now, just tell me where I can stand. And I'll keep my mouth shut. And I won't say no more. But don't make me go back. It takes a sight in my life. It takes a man being able. It takes qualifications. I know it does. But don't kick me out. Just tell me where you want me. Don't let me come in here and preach to them and me not understand what you're trying to say. Just come and tell me. If I'm out of order when I testify, tell me, say, Kenny, you can't testify no more. Tell me what I am able to do, but don't make me go back. I don't want to go back. I don't want you to go back. I want you to go to God. God's got so much more to store for us. Then that life, I'm telling you, there is pleasure in sin, but it only lasts for a season. Is it worth the time you want it? Don't go back. Find your little place. There is a, there is a life. That we have to live. Right. And we can't cross boundaries in here. Yes. We can't cross boundaries. And, and that's what happens a lot of times. We recognize that. I don't want to do that, do you? But I ain't going to leave. No. I don't want to leave. No. I don't want to go back. Just tell me, God's going to judge each one of us. You know how serious that is? God is going to judge each one of us. I mean, He told me that if I don't tell when He tells me, He said, I am going to lay their blood in your charge. Friend, what if we take that prophecy home and we think that it ain't that important and God lays that at mine in your charge and we just go on about our business and think everything is all right. It's too late to make you right when I get to judgment. It's too late for me to say I'm sorry. Came to church for being hateful sometimes. I can't make you right then. Today is the day. I'd like to encourage you today. I'm telling somebody tonight. You know exactly. Yeah, they know. Come on, kids. Don't go that road. Don't go that road. Tell me before they said if I tell 
my child that they're going to get a whooping. I don't care what happens, they're going to get a whooping. And I said, it's good not to lie. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I wanted to teach my child. That when he said, I'm sorry, Daddy, and it come from his heart. He meant what he was saying. Daddy could ask forgiveness also for the whooping that he promised. And show mercy on him. I remember one time we were standing in Wendy's, part, uh, in Wendy's and Gabriel told me, he said, get me an ice cream. That line was piled up. I, I know. I'm a little long way. Oh, oh, man, long way. There you be. That line was big and Gabriel was wanting the ice cream. He just lit a feather. I said, son, I ain't standing in that line to get no ice cream. We'll get you one another time. He kept on a little bit, but it continued to escalate until he got to the place where he started showing himself in wings. <laughs> Please, Daddy, give me an ice cream. I want an ice cream. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to get you ice cream. I'm going to get you ice cream, son. I said, when you get, when you get home, I'm going to get you a whooping, too. When I was standing in that line out there, waiting to get him an ice cream. I wasn't real mad, but I was probably getting aggravated because of the line. I heard Amy sitting out in the car telling Gabriel, said, if you win, when he gets out here, and you tell him that you're sorry, and you mean it, I heard Amy telling him. In the line, I was in the windiest line, and I heard him and her speaking in the car. Yeah. Said, "You really, if you're really mean, he'll forgive you, but you'll have to mean it." Yeah, yeah come on. When I got out there and I opened that door, come on, tears are falling down Gabriel's eyes, and his heart was broken. Yeah, he said, "Daddy, I'm sorry." Yeah, come on. You know what I told him, Gary? I forgive you. Come on, kid. And Daddy's sorry because I lied. You're not going to get a whooping. You're going to get forgiveness. Come on, kid. Come on, kid. Come on. Come on. God bless. Sometimes we just need a little forgiveness. That's right. Every Sometimes we just need to recognize God ain't going to hold us. Yeah. He's going to forgive us. Yeah, come on. Right. 